Today's interview is that of Professor Konovalov uh, at the time of the 9th European Congress on Neurosurgery in Moscow on June the 24th. Uh, Professor Konovalov, I very much appreciate your agreeing Thank to you. give this interview. I wonder if you could begin by telling us something of your early uh, education uh, prior to entering medicine. Hmm. This is not not easy question. You see, I even don't know how to start. I, I was in school during, I began my school during the war time. It was a very hard time in my country. So, and level of education this time also was not so perfect, not so good. And I was born in Moscow. I finished, I started the school in the Ural region during the war time and finished my school at Moscow. And after that, I became a medical student. At which uh, faculty of medicine? It is the first medical institution of Moscow. Mm -hmm. And when I graduated uh, the institution, I start to work at the Burdenko Institute. And from this time, now it is, I don't know, maybe 35 years ago, when I first time came to this institution, till now I work there. Um, the Burdenko Institute is uh, devoted to neurosurgery. Yes, it, it is an interesting organization, especially for neurosurgery, especially yes. for neurosurgery. It's independent. It is not like a big hospital. It's only uh, accommodations, only bed, and everything for neurosurgical patients. It's under the Ministry of Health, though. No, not, not so. It uh, belongs to Academy of Medical Science. Oh. Is it interesting that the, <clears throat> uh, just after the war, the Medi uh, Academy of Medical Science was organized. In the first president and the organizer of our Academy of Medical Science was our great neurosurgeon, Academician Burdenka. It was his idea to organize the Academy of Medical Science and the Institute of Neurosurgery, who is also named after Burdenko, was the f one of the first instit institution included in the Academy of Medical Science. In what year was this? It was in 60, uh, not in 46, 1946. In 40, 1946. Where had uh, Professor Burdenko been trained? in neurosurgery? Uh, Murdenko was trained uh, mostly in, uh, in Russia, mm -hmm. uh, uh, after in Soviet Union, after the revolution in Soviet Union. I know that he spent some years or some months in different countries, in Germany, for example. And he was uh, <coughs> educated in the Tartu University, Derpt University. Mm -hmm. Now it is uh, uh, one of the, our Baltic Republic. It is oldest Russian university mm -hmm. with very high level of education. And uh, there was a many very prominent uh, general surgeons and other doctors. That's Dorpet. Dorpet, Dorpet. Yes, yes. There is and the se several names for the same city. Yuriev. Yuriev yes. is a real Russian. Yuriev, the mm -hmm. first name. Uh, Dorpet is a German name. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tartu is Estonian name. So it's different. Now, now we call it Tartu. Mm -hmm. um, but in time, in time of uh, Burdenko, it was Yuri for Derpt University. Yes. So he was primarily a general surgeon who developed a special interest in neurosurgery? Yes, he was, mm -hmm. he was a, a very interesting personality. Mm -hmm. He was a general surgeon. Mm -hmm. He was also a physio physiologist. He was very interested mm -hmm. in physiology. In other discipline, medical discipline, it, and uh, you see, during the war time, he was the uh, head uh, surgeon of our army. The entire army? Uh, yes, entire army, mm -hmm. the head surgeon. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is the real name, uh, English name. Uh, the more important, uh, uh, all the surgical service wa was under him. We would call it probably the surgeon general. Uh, surgeon general, he yes. was surgeon general, mm -hmm. yes. And then when did he die? Mm -hmm. He died in uh, 14, uh, 1948. Just uh, shortly so after. Uh, so I'm, I'm okay. sorry, in, in, in 1946. Just shortly after. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. He was seriously ill even during the war time and after the war time. He has uh, 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 several ischemic strokes, yes. but nevertheless he continued to work. Mm -hmm. 
until the end he was very effective. Do, is uh, research conducted at the Burdinko Institute? Research? Uh, yes, also. You see, the, uh, you, if you are interested in, uh, in the uh, organization of Burdinko Institute, you see, I can uh, explain something. So I, I repeated it's special institution only for neurosurgery. Yes. Uh, neurosurgery. So everything is for uh, investigation and uh, to treat patient with uh, serious disease which need neurosurgical s service. Mm -hmm. So we have ne ne uh, have in one building in one service radiologist, neurologist, ne neuropsychologist, neurosurgeons. Mm -hmm. Um, biochemists, mm -hmm. uh, eye doctors, uh, I don't know. So different specialties, yes. accumulation of different spe mm -hmm. specialties who are important to uh, not only to look after the patient, but to investigate patients, make some clinical investigation. And not, not only clinical, uh, some, we have several uh, small, but uh, several uh, special anatomical laboratories, physiological laboratories. So we try to to get the all information about the patient. Now, uh, your medical schools are six years in duration. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. six years of duration, and after that, there is additional specialization. Yes. Now, how do the doctors who graduate? They require a thesis, I imagine, to uh, graduate from medical school. Is this correct? Uh, they Senior they student. have to pass examination. Not to write a thesis, though. No, not thesis. Okay. No, no, no. How do they gain entry for training in neurosurgery at the Burdinko Institute? Uh, so, after the graduation uh, from the inst inst uh, institution, they ought to spend, in the beginning, two years. We called it ordinatura, like internship. Yes. And there is a program not very difficult to be. Uh, to understand the more, uh, the, uh, the more important principles, how to investigate and how to treat patients with ne neurological and neurosurgical yes. uh, illnesses. But do they gain admission by a competitive examination like yes. in France? Or? Yes, yes. There is, exam there is examination. They have to pass the examination. Mm -hmm. They have to be prepared, yes. specially prepared. But our system is different. The system of education is uh, different from other countries because we have no, we have no special neurosurgical qualification. I we see. have no special e examination. Mm -hmm. So everything depends in which condition the young neurosurgeon will work. How many uh, young doctors do you take for training every year? I, again, it is not an easy question because there are different way of education, and uh, some of them came for two years, some for several months, and some for uh, even more long period for uh, five years. And so, so altogether, uh, every, uh, every year we have not less than maybe 50. It's in all. In, in all, all. In all. But they are not only uh, belong to the staff of. And uh, uh, institute, but they came from different, uh, usually from different republics. I see. Yes, and they stay with us di different period of time. On the average, how long do they stay? How long would the doctor uh, stay? Uh, usually, usually two years mm -hmm. or, or five or six years. If he wanted to become a professor, how many years would be required? Uh, it's uh, not less, not less than five in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But to become a professor, you need spend uh, some additional yes. years. Yes. You see, we have several stages. First stage is uh, internship. We called it ordinatura, two years of general neurosurgical education. After that is uh, is so-called postgraduate courses, as aspirantura, yes. three years. And after mm -hmm. that, you have to fit your uh, scientific thesis. And yes. you are prepared for the scientific work and for teaching work. Yes. And you can, you can become professor, but additionally you need several years because you have to um, get the position, the professor's, the professor's position. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the doctors uh, are, you have special services, I imagine, clinical services. Do you have it divided up into neurotraumatology? Uh, yes. Neuro-oncology? Yes, yes, it is an important question. Mm -hmm. uh, in our institution, we have 
and many serious patients, practically from all pa part of the Soviet Union. Uh, and it's happened that uh, the more difficult, I repeat, more difficult cases, more difficult tumors, for example, or mm -hmm. some difficult uh, vascular uh, illnesses, the patients with such illnesses are accumulated in the institutions. Yes. So we ought to divide our service. We have a specialization. So we have several teams, several wards, only for oncological patients. Mm -hmm. Every year we operate not less than 105 uh, 1,500 patients with different brain tumors. Are there any particular types of brain tumors uh, that you see more commonly in the Soviet Union than we see in, say, North America? Uh, no, no, no. I, I uh, think that... Uh, Very similar? Uh, the, the, the same, the same. Uh, and uh, But uh, I just want to add, uh, we have several teams. For example, we have a team to treat patients with pituitary adenomas. Oh. Uh, to a small team to treat patients with acoustic neuronomas. Mm -hmm. On the patient with basal scale tumors. It, it seems to, uh, to us important because if you operate one patient in a year, you can be yes, you can be quite skill, skillful. Yes. Um, I understand that uh, you uh, have specialized to some degree in operating upon brainstem gliomas or brainstem tumors in children. Is this correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It's, it's correct. You see, uh, uh, it is uh, my, maybe last few years I am more interested in this in this problem, um, but previously I um, I, I start as a. Um, a neurosurgeon who was very much interested in the stereotactic surgery, functional surgery. Yes. After that, I, several years, I operated patients mostly with arterial and anterior venous malformations. Yes. After that, um, and dif difficult, usually difficult meningiomas, basal scale meningiomas. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my la la last, uh, la last years, I am very much interested in treatment. Uh, in treatment of um, tumors, uh, deeply located tumors, uh, tumors in the region of the third ventricle in, in brain stem localization. Yes. Now, uh, to go back a little bit, I, uh, I had forgotten to ask earlier, when did you uh, enter uh, training as a neurosurgeon then? I, uh, all my life I spent in Moscow in the Burdenko Institute. I, I was lucky to spend uh, about three months in England when I was a young neurosurgeon, it was very important. Where was that? I was uh, in London. I w I when, when it was, it was in 61. And 61. where? I was spent two months in London, mm -hmm. one month in Edinburgh, mm -hmm. and one month in Oxford. What about a, about less than about what, months. What originally interested you in going into neurosurgery as your profession? Oh, it is an interesting story. Uh, my uh, my dream was to become a new neurologist because my father was neurologist. Yes, I, uh, and uh, my idea was also to become neurologist. But those time it was difficult uh, to work together in the same place, in the same, for example, institution when your father worked. So I have to go to other place, and uh, this other place was the Burdent Institution. So I start as neurologist, but I was very uh, uh, I was soon I was spoiled and became neurosurgeon. Your father was uh, director of the Institute for Neurology. Uh, yes, we have also an independent Institute of Neurology, mm -hmm. just the same as Institute of Neurosurgery. And uh, he was uh, di di director of the, mm -hmm. the, this institute. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, uh, when you developed uh, your interest in stereotactic surgery, was that primarily for involuntary movements, Parkinson's disease? Yes, mo yes, mostly for Parkinsonism mm -hmm. and different kind of un involuntary movement. In this period of time, this uh, surgery started. We, everybody was very much impressed yes. with results when you can just insert cannula in the, some cortical nucleus and tremor or some yes. involuntary movement disappeared. So, mm -hmm. uh, but that was primarily for Parkinson's patients? Mostly Parkinson's for Parkinson's. Disease. Also some other lesions, uh, pain for example. And Where would you make your lesions for pain? Uh, for me, uh, this time we usually made the thalamic, thalamic lesions. Mm -hmm.
And did you use chemo pallidotomy, Dr. Cooper's technique? Yes, or? we start with uh, that mm -hmm. technique. After that, mm -hmm. we improved, we change it. Mm -hmm. We use cooling, we use also coagulation and mm -hmm. di different methods of destruction. And the type of stereotactic equipment you used, did you use something like the recruit apparatus or uh, the Lexel apparatus? Now, now in our institute, we have different kind of equi equipment. When, when I start, we have no good apparatus, so some of them were have made, uh, uh, no, how, how to say, self-made, self self-made. Self mm -hmm. So I remember how I pre made my, myself this very primitive, but quite effective stereotactic mm -hmm. device. Mm -hmm. Did you work with Professor Kandel then? Yes, um, Professor uh, Kandel was my one of my first teachers. I see. In surgery. Mm -hmm. And we started with him the stereotactic work. I see. Are you still, uh, does your institute still perform uh, stereotactic surgery? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We have a special team mm -hmm. for functional and stereotactic neurosurgery. For epilepsy also? No, not for epilepsy. Mm -hmm. uh, we see, again, there is a separation of function. We have another clinic, even not in Moscow, in Leningrad and uh, in Kiev. Uh, we are specially. Uh, interested in surgery of uh, patient with epilepsy. I see. And uh, the um, second field of interest that you developed in was in arteriovenous malformations. Uh, yes, uh, not only arteriovenous malformations, arterial aneurysm. So, in uh, oh, arterial, uh, arterial aneurysm, you see, uh, in our country, to became professor, for example, you have. Um, def uh, defeat two degrees. Mm -hmm. Do you have to get two degrees? Uh, the degree of the candidate of uh, medical science and doctor, and second is doctor of medical science. Mm -hmm. And all my theses were de and, uh, devoted to a problem of uh, surgery of arterial disease. When a person obtains his uh, doctoral uh, degree, uh, does he still have to take another examination? to be eligible to become a professor? It is n not a real examination. This is necessary to uh, prepare a scientific, uh, big, important scientific work mm -hmm. to be experienced in some field and uh, practically write a um, sizable book about yes. the subject. Yes. And defeat it in the special council. I see. Now, in, with aneurysms, did you develop uh, your own clips and clip applying forceps? Uh, more or less, or did you use those of other uh, uh, th th Those times when we started this problem, we have very primitive clips. Mm -hmm. We try to uh, prepare our own clips and or Im improve uh, the clips we, ha mm -hmm. we had. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it was difficult be beginning because uh, we have, uh, st uh, and uh, those time, I had those time, and now we have serious problem with equipment, with necessary equipment for neurosurgery. Such as what type of equipment now? Oh, you understand that neurosurgery is a very complicated specialty. We need, for good neurosurgery, you need a lot of things. You need yes. CT scans, you need MRI, you yes. need positron and tomography. We need microscopes, very good microscopes, mm -hmm. ultrasound, aspirator, and so on. So on. you can. Uh, do you what? Uh, do you need any of the particular ones now? Do you have everything? Uh, now we have uh, not everything. I don't know if maybe in some very rich American clinic you have everything because yes. te te there always there is improvement of uh, mm -hmm. technical equipment. So yeah. uh, some new device. Yes. Are PET scanners are still very expensive. A uh, PET scanner, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope that in the f uh, near future we shall have o also PET scan in our clinic. Do you use the gamma knife yet? The gamma knife, no. We use proton beam. Proton mm -hmm. beam. Mm -hmm. There is not a very important uh, difference between these yes. two tools. Do you, uh, is Moscow the only site for the proton beam? Or? No, no, no. We also use proton beam in Leningrad. Mm -hmm. In the case of trauma, um, are patients uh, evacuated by uh, airplane or helicopter from remote distances? Or? Oh, it depends. You see, the Soviet Union is a large country and facilities are so different. There are some places there is no airplanes. Nothing may, 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 maybe 
dogs or uh, alinka, uh, elks. No, it's a it's Deers. Deers. Oh, elks. No, elks. Elks. Mm -hmm. elks. In some uh, north north yes. region, for mm -hmm. example. So, how many departments of neurosurgery are there throughout the Soviet Union? <sighs> I hope now maybe about uh, 500, mm -hmm. about 500. But That's there, remarkable growth. but but you see, it is uh, this number doesn't mean anything because mm -hmm. some of these departments are very small and very primitively equipped, mm -hmm. just to help patients with head injury, for example, yes. or some mm -hmm. very uh, not uh, quite simple uh, illnesses. Yes. Um, uh, we uh, also have we have uh, s several levels of uh, um, medical assistance mm -hmm. to patients with uh, head uh, uh, lesions. How many centers are able to operate upon brain tumors? 100, 150? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, there are different sizes of city, of course. Mm -hmm. But the highest level in my country is uh, three institutions. Mm -hmm. One in Moscow, one in Kiev, and the third is in Leningrad. Which one was the first in the Soviet Union? The first one in Leningrad. Mm -hmm. In Leningrad. Mm -hmm. Who had founded it? He was uh, founded by uh, Mol Mol Molotkov, Molotkov mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Polenov. Mm -hmm. Had they been trained uh, in uh, Europe, Germany? And in Europe, I, I don't know exactly. Uh, may maybe maybe they spent mm -hmm. some years mm -hmm. in Germany also. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, no, it's not so important because uh, we have very interesting and very good traditions in neurosurgery mm -hmm. in Russia. Uh, uh, you see, our great neurologist, Professor Bechterev, oh, yes. Uh, yes. maybe you know him, he yes. is psy psychiatrist, he was neurologist, and he was very much interested in neurosurgery. Yes. And uh, he organized the first neurosurgical, special neurosurgical uh, theater in the 1897, as far as, as I know, uh, there was a first in the world independent neurosurgical theater just for neurosurgical patients. Where was this? Uh, it was in St. Petersburg in the uh, military medical mm -hmm. academy. Mm -hmm. And a few year, uh, years later, he organized also the first independent neurosurgical unit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, his... Uh, a disciple, Professor Pusso, yes, uh, he very, set, famous. Uh, very famous, mm -hmm. uh, set up the first, again, uh, it seems to me, that the first in the world independent neurosurgical chair. I see. And also he opened the first in the world uh, military, special military hospital for uh, um, neurosurgical patients. I see. And uh, also our journal questions of neurosurgery was organized by, Bur by Burdenko, and he uh, uh, first edition was in 1937, a year before the uh, very famous journal of neurosurgery in the United States. Yes. So uh, we have a very good our own Russian tradition. I see. Yes, in neurosurgery. Mm -hmm. So most of the present day neurosurgeons, the younger neurosurgeons, were trained. Uh, I'm sorry, not younger, but the more middle-aged neurosurgeons were trained either in Leningrad, Moscow, or Kiev. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so. uh, do you um, you mentioned earlier while we were changing film that uh, Kiev has a special interest in um, functional neurosurgery? That's one. Or psychiatric. Uh, one. Uh, that's but only one of the, uh, their interests. I, I understand. One, yes. But in, in Leningrad for epilepsy. No, so. no, 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 not that institution. In Leningrad, they have uh, another institution. It's ps psychiatry and neurology. It is after Bechterev. Yes. Yes. In this institution, they operate patients with epilepsy. I see. They're interested in this problem. So, if a, if you have a patient here who has complicated epilepsy, who might uh, benefit from surgery. He might be transferred to Leningrad for... Uh, you see, uh, surgery of epilepsy is not very common in Soviet Union until yes, now. Yes, well, it's not common in many places, I yes. suppose, today. We also operate some patients. Mm -hmm. if, 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 for example, I know that there is some lesion of temporal lobe or in some other, mm -hmm. place, in some other uh, part of the brain, 
so we operate it in, at uh, Burden. Oh, I see. Yes. I see. If there is some organic, we call it organic lesion, so we um, uh, shall, shall operate him I see. in our clinic. I see. Not transfer him in another hospital. I see. And uh, as far as uh, your work uh, with the aneurysm surgery, you mentioned having initially to make your own clips and clip not, the it's not, and it's not my own no. clips, it's some, some maybe modification. No, I meant it's in not, general. Um, yes, it's not special construction, mm -hmm. yes, not. Mm -hmm. And uh, with your interest now in um, basal uh, tumors. tumors ba basal tumors and, 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 and also third ventricle. Third ventricle, brainstem tumors. Mm -hmm. uh, Different, uh, different kind of difficult to, yes. tumors. Do you find uh, a fairly high instance of von Recklinghausen's disease here in no, association think, uh, with brainstem tumors? Uh, yes, it's it's quite common. We have a lot of mm -hmm. such patients. Mm -hmm. It is a serious problem because surgery is sometimes not very helpful. Yes. You, you uh, have patients. Uh, sometimes patient had many tumors. Yes. Uh, so you can remove one, two, three, but mm -hmm. the illness. Still Do you exist. find uh, that there's many uh, of the brainstem tumor patients who suffer from von Recklinghausen's disease? Not, not many. It is uh, you, you, usually, usually it's independent tumor, um, brainstem glial tumors without association with ir I see. illnesses. Because most of my patients had von Recklinghausen's disease. That's why I'm asking. Yes. In my series. No, no, no. Maybe, maybe a few, but uh, mo mostly. Uh, Do you find the proton beam helps at all? It is helpful, but only for some special situation. It's helpful for small pituitary adenomas we irradiate uh, this patient. It's helpful for small arterial venous malformation. Dr. Special Special is living. Oh. Why don't, I we, just want to let you know I tried. <laughs> well, no, why don't you come? I appreciate it. Why don't you continue? You know, I don't know. Uh, this is uh, <clears throat> Robert Spetzer. I'm sitting in for uh, Roy Selby. Um, you have made an incredible impact, not only in uh, the Soviet Union, uh, but have brought neurosurgery from the Soviet Union uh, across to Europe and the United States. Uh, particularly with your uh, dramatic uh, cases of brainstem uh, lesions. Could you just tell us how you accumulated such an incredible uh, series? Uh, you see, it's, it's, for us it's uh, very simple because we ought to operate a lot of patients with difficult, uh, difficult uh, uh, illnesses, uh, patients with uh, difficult brain tumors because uh, local doctors uh, have no um, possibilities to operate them, so they sent uh, them to other hospitals and usually all these patients came to Burdenko Institutes. We always have a lot of uh, uh, really very serious uh, cases, a lot of patients with third ventricle tumors, some of them in disparate state uh, and uh, with uh, tumors uh, in the uh, of brain stem and um, tumor with basal localization. You know, you know, every, every kind of difficult the tumors. M more than enough, uh, yes. more than enough. It, well, another problem. I think what's probably particularly uh, impressive is after having seen your presentations that when we look at what we often see in the United States or Europe, we see uh, much smaller tumors that we're yeah. dealing with. And you're obviously uh, confronted with uh, tumors of much larger size, which I assume is related to uh, the referral system and probably the lack of CT scans. Yes, and yes, yes. It's all altogether. Uh, it's uh, because of um, not very high level of neurosurgery everywhere. Uh, not enough CT scan, not enough facilities, even not enough microscopes. And uh, sometimes diagnostic is late. And uh, also, all these difficult cases are collected in one place, or in several places. That is why in, the, in big institutions uh, such as the Moscow Institution, we have always ma many uh, patients with uh, different kind of serious problems. You've uh, been president of 
this uh, meeting, which is going on right at this uh, time, a particularly stressful time. <laughs> You've taken the uh, time out for this uh, interview. Uh, you're head of the Institute. You're world recognized. Where do you want to go from here? Uh, so what, what's, what, what do you want to do in the next uh, 10 years? 10 years? <laughs> I only dream, I only know what I do after this Congress. <laughs> I, I, will, I will sleep. I don't know how long, maybe one day. Yeah, or maybe and then relax. Week. After that, I start to again to start to play tennis, uh -huh. and to be in good physical shape, uh, because it is a really very uh, difficult time. You're a tennis player, besides a neurosurgeon. I happen to know that uh, personally, uh, uh, because you've beaten me. <laughs> um, what other hobbies do you have outside of neurosurgery? Uh, not, uh, I, I, li I like different kind of sport because I, I, it's my idea that for neurosurgeon, uh, for relaxation and to be in, uh, in good conditions necessary to be engaged in any kind of sport. Now um, tennis um, for me is more common, but previously I um, uh, um, how to say I don't know. I used I I I I went in different kind of sport uh, and uh, at, uh, athletic uh, in the skiing uh, gymnastic and now uh, tennis is more convenient mm -hmm. you, you need special training you, do, you doesn't need special training for that. do you have any plans for the institute oh it is it's this question this is maybe the most important because uh, we have very serious problem with our uh, Moscow institution. It is well uh, uh, um, well known institution, but it is uh, located in the very old and uh, not good for medical purposes building. And it's absolutely necessary to have a new one. Now we have a decision of our government. Even more, we have a money. Uh, especially for this building and equi necessary equipment. And I hope that ne in the next two years uh, we will be have a normal condition, I maybe even better than normal condition for neurosurgeon. Is that sort of the that reflection of the state of uh, Moscow and Russia as well? You're going through a difficult time. You've uh, mentioned it at your opening address. Yes, yes. Um, but you see, in my country, everybody understands the difficulties which we confronted with in neurosurgery, for example. So it's not, it's not too difficult to persuade important people, our government. It's necessary to develop neurosurgery. The problem is we had not enough money. We have too many economical problems together. But I, I hope, I still hope that we, uh, very soon we will have a very good institution, new one. You're married and you have uh, children. Do you encourage your children to follow your footsteps? I, uh, it is a pity I have only one child. Uh -huh. He's a medical student. And as far as I understand, he also want to be, became a surgeon, maybe neurosurgeon. It is uh, like a tradition in my family because my father was neurologist, my grandfather was general surgeon, my mother was, was also doctor, so it will be said in, in fourth generation of doctors. Uh, I think considering the stress you're under right now, uh, he's in the uh, middle of uh, the European uh, Congress with uh, how many people are here? Uh, you see, the Congress just started. Uh, the reg registration is not finished. I, um, I hope that altogether it will be uh, 15 hundreds, maybe uh, 20 hundreds of people. Half post, uh, from Soviet Union and half from uh, Europe and other countries. It was uh, very striking uh, for myself last evening during the opening ceremonies. Uh, there was a recognition and, in fact, a, a tribute to uh, the fallen soldiers because this is a 50-year anniversary yes. 
of when uh, uh, Russia was uh, involved in the war. And yet, uh, almost as a bridge builder, this was followed by uh, the last movement of the Ninth Symphony by Beethoven. Uh, was this on purpose, or what was your philosophy behind that? Yeah, this uh, is difficult questions. I, I, I only uh, want to say it, is, it seems to me it's a good, good, good solution, good decision. It, it was from, from the perspective of myself and everyone I talked to, it was uh, touching, it was uh, sensitive, and it seemed uh, that the, the whole spirit of the meeting is building bridges. I mean, here we've got people from South Africa, mm -hmm. which not very long ago uh, we're not part of the community. Uh, there is no longer a really an East and a West. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're meeting in uh, Russia as probably as unified, even in the world of neurosurgery, as ever before. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that gesture in itself was uh, uh, particularly poignant. Yes, we are neurosurgeons are a very big uh, family very good family, so there is no, you see, it's very, you, we can divide us, uh, belonging to Soviet Union, belonging to Germany, we are, to the United States. Well, on, on behalf of the uh, AANS, I'd like to thank you very, very much for thank, taking the time. <laughs> thank you, I'm very pleased to be inter interviewed by you. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you.